run from it. Destiny arrives all the same. Two days and five grueling events in Columbus, Ohio. The final moments of the Arnold are upon us. Ten men have performed feats of strength thought impossible a generation ago and no doubt have inspired the next generation to redefine what is possible for the future. Time to crown our champion. Alongside Dr. Bill Crawford, I'm Sam Farber. It is a pleasure and a privilege to have you with us here today. And Bill, it events have come and gone. We've seen some outstanding performances, some inspiring ones, but in the end, it really comes down to half Thor Bjornsson, Mateusz Kieliszkowski. One of those two men is going to walk away with the title. Yes, that's true, and it turns into half Thor's legacy here at the Arnold because he wants to have three wins in a row, and also, uh, you know, Mateusz wants to step up into that champion's role. That's their goal tonight. Taking a look at some of the events throughout the two days of competition, the bag over bar was a no-brainer to go to Hathor Bjornsson. He took a lead into the final day, final event of day number one, the Wheel of Pain, and that's where Mateusz Kieliszkowski made his move. Mateusz moving the Wheel of Pain in a way no one has before, setting the mark to beat that Hathor Bjornsson was unable to match. He ended day one a half point back, but then day two started with the deadlift, and despite the best effort of Mateusz Kieliszkowski, he had a bit of an equipment air, maybe make things more difficult. He did come through with this big lift on his third attempt to minimize the damage, but this was half Thor Bjornsson's event. The only man to go over 1,000 pounds made it look fairly easy. He reclaimed his lead and set up a big matchup head-to-head -head in the timber carry. Kieliszkowski flew up the ramp to claim the 10 points and keep himself in the conversation heading in to the sixth and final event of the competition. The lead had been five and a half. It is down to three and a half points. Kieliszkowski hot on the trail of Hathor Bjornsson, but the mountain is still in command and has complete control over who wins here at the 2020 Arnold Strongman Classic. And he's standing by with our Kiki Dixon. Half four, there's a three and a half point difference between first and second. What are you going to do to prepare mentally and physically for this final event? I'm going to go back, back home. I'm going to eat well. I'm going to rest, talk to my coach, and um, do what I do best, perform. You know, I'm, I'm feeling great. Uh, Sheer Temple went very well for me in training. I think it's going to go well. I'm a, I'm a believer, and, you know, I got this. Now... Mateusz is known for his pressing abilities. You obviously are no slacker in that area either. What are your thoughts on the battle between you two for this final event? It's going to be a fight. You know, he obviously has to win that event. You know, uh, he's very good. It is an event where he can easily win, you know. But I'm also, like you said, I'm a very good uh, in the Sheer Temple. I've been training that very really hard. So I believe that, you know, it's, the thing is, it's going to be hard for him to get some guys in between, I believe. So I'm excited. We are too. We look forward to watching that battle unfold. Thank you. Thank you so much. Half Thor with Kiki Dixon earlier today getting ready for event six. And he referenced Mateusz Kieliszkowski and his excellence in this Sear Dumbbell a Strategic Challenge event. It's going to be a tough challenge to beat him, but he has to win by a certain margin to take the title. Yes, he does. And he could actually win. Mateusz could actually win four events and still play second. But for Mateusz, this is actually business as usual. Business as usual for him is to have astonishing personal performances and individual events. Here he moved the wheel faster than anybody. He had that great trial by Stone. We expect to see something big in the dumbbells. He won in a record time the frame. That's his MO. And of course, even in events where he didn't do as well compared to the field, he set personal marks with that deadlift. He's Giving himself a chance here in event number six, the Sear 
strategic challenge. And let's take a look at uh, the tail of the tape for this one. It's a little bit different from a normal dumbbell in that you have to have some strategy in it. One competitor at a time, they each choose their weight. Heavier weight trumps multiple reps. So you can lift 300 pounds five times. Someone lifts 310 once, that's the person who wins. Yes, it is. So it's the most weight overhead that actually wins. What it, there's going to be some strategy here, but in the end, it's the it's the diesel that's going to take the the heaviest dumbbell overhead that will that will carry the night. Bill, what's your keys to the event? So my keys to the event are placement of the dumbbell. The dumbbell has to be loaded properly up onto the shoulder, and then you need to use hip drive to get it over your head. Locking it out cannot have a chance unless you explode from the hips and get it high enough to lock out underneath it. Sear Dumbbell Strategic Challenge ready to get underway. They're on the main stage here in Columbus, Ohio. And of course, all 10 men will be competing, but it really boils down to, if you're looking for the champ, Mateusz Kieliszkowski and Hathor Bjornsson. There's also a very interesting race going on for third place between last year's runner-up, Martins Litzis and J.F. Caron. Only a half point separates in this the, at this point, and I relish watching the good competition. So with those two men put out a, a great performance and try to beat each other, that's going to be just as interesting to me as first and second. They're going to be introducing the athletes first. We see the mountain, half Thor Bjornsson being introduced to the crowd. Maciej Belshak is in the background getting ready to go. So you can see half Thor looks pretty good and relaxed. He's ready to... Uh, step up and he's got a strategy in his head too i think he's going to probably start with one he's not going to look at reps he's going to look at heavy weight you know we, we've had the pleasure of watching these men compete over these entire two days but seeing them all lined up side by side it gives you the perspective just how big the mountain is he is big for big men yes yeah, so, so jf caron's about six four and weighs 330 pounds and has no body fat and has shoulders look like coconuts and he doesn't look particularly large next to half Thor. And you've got one of our rookies coming onto the stage, Rob Kearney, who's had an outstanding showing in his first appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic. And he also dwarfed by the mountain. He's five foot 10, 285 pounds. Yes, but he's, he's prepared for the dumbbell. I expect to see him uh, pull out a pretty good performance. Mateusz is the world's record holder with the Sear dumbbell. And we'll come out uh, not just to uh, set a record tonight, but really wants to dominate this in a performance to possibly win tonight and the whole way around. There is Martins Litzis currently in third place. He mathematically could move into second, but it is very unlikely uh, he would need to basically win the event and have Kieliszkowski finish last. It's... Certainly possible. This is it a sporting is competition. Anything can happen. We didn't expect necessarily Hathor Bjornsson to struggle as much as he did on the timber carry, but he did, and it opened up a window, the, and uh, that's what makes these competitions so much fun. The door is open, and you know, uh, and if there's any crack to slip through, Martins is an expert of doing that, so it's possible that he moves up, but he really wants to secure his podium spot in third mostly. And Alexi, he's had kind of a weekend that I didn't expect. I thought I thought a little bit more would come out of him, but again, that's why we have the competitions because uh, we have to see how they do. Jerry's a very good presser as well. Excellent pressing. He's great at static events. And Jerry Pritchett, it's odd to, to see him both have a, a strong day with what he did in the timber carry, but also have a disappointing day because we knew he was aiming for a thousand pound deadlift. It just wasn't quite in the cards. That's true. That's very true. Misha, uh, Misha uh, Shivlikov comes out and uh, Mikhail is, uh, is shown us so much this weekend with that ankle injury, still had some great performances. This could be a little difficult for him because to, you have to balance these dumbbells overhead. So he might have a little bit of a balance problem, but he surprises us all the way around. Bobby Thompson, um, He's coming on. He came on in a couple of the events and had some pretty good events. He really wants to show everybody that he belongs here and get a couple of heavy dumbbells over his head. All those dumbbells are out there. If you were competing, let's say you are Kieliszkowski, you know you're the favorite in this particular event. You've demonstrated some pretty impressive feats in the past with the dumbbell. What are you trying to do here 
to put as much room between yourself and the mountain? I want to throw the knockout punch. And what does that mean? That means I'm probably going to pick something around 300 to, to get a feel, go the next kind of step up 10, 310, 315. And I'm, and I'm probably, you know, if those feel pretty decent, grab the 320 or 330. And 150 kilogram dumbbells astounding. Here again is the event description for you. 90 seconds to establish your heaviest dumbbell press. You cannot match the maximum. Uh, the competitors who cannot match the maximum will attempt to achieve the most reps at the heaviest weight they can lift. The heaviest lift does win. So someone lifts the 320-pound dumbbell and the person right behind him lifts a 300 pound dumbbell five times doesn't matter it's the heaviest weight not the number of reps let's shift our perspective here a little bit half thor bjornson he has not a huge lead but a comfortable one he needs to finish fifth or better in this event he has the benefit of watching what a lot of other athletes do what is he trying to do is he is he strictly watching the competition and going off that or does he want to post some eye-popping number in this event he wants to he wants to secure his his uh, place as the winner overall. So he's going to do what has to be done. He's a professional. He knows what needs to happen. So he's got a strategy. I'm sure that uh, and he you know watching the other men, it will take some pressure off of him. But sometimes pressure helps you perform a little bit better. So he has a strategy. I'm sure he and his coach have worked that out. But I mean, like I said, you know, we're talking about close to you know 150 kilogram dumbbells that these guys will be trying for. It's astonishing. And Half Thor has had that uh, that strategy throughout. He's had opportunities to go for record breakers on bag over bar, on the deadlift, and elected not to do it, even though those are very strong events for him. He didn't seem to expand a lot of energy in either of them in getting the win. But rather than try and push it, he was taking his foot off the gas, conserving some energy. Maybe if those events fall in a different order, maybe he goes for it, maybe he doesn't. But he is in the position he wanted to be in, first place with a three-and-a-half-point lead going into the final event. And maybe knowing along the way that this was Kieliskovsky's wheelhouse, he wanted that cushion to be there. He's exactly where he wants to be. He's in first place, and he can. this is his to lose. Time now to begin event six, our Sear Dumbbell Strategic Challenge. Matias Belshak, 27-year-old from Slovenia, will be first. Been a very disappointing competition for him, mostly due to injury. He's been dealing with a hip problem throughout. Injuries often have a large impact in sports, and uh, unfortunately, timing just wasn't perfect for Matias, but we'll see what he can do here. So uh, it says uh, I think he's probably, if I were him, I'd really go for the 274. That's a little bit of an odd weight. 274, however, is the original sear dumbbell weight. And so you want to make sure you get a rep. Okay. Getting it up to his shoulder, you'll see him place it in kind of an odd angle. But that's really to be able to get his hips directly under the dumbbell and drive it overhead. Tempting here at 280 pounds. Great lift. I mean, he just showed a lot of he just showed a lot of thrust on that. He's a professional. He's got a lot of pride. He's been hurt, but you know what? He's trained for this and prepared. 290. He's done great in the last few years uh, here at the Arnold. So this is disappointing. He's he's placed as high as fourth here. 300. Okay, he's trying to play and throw he's a knockout punch at, at a couple of the other guys. He, that felt really good for him. He thinks he can get this one. 300 pounds. Machaz Belshak. Oh, that was so close. And Very not close. Not quite enough. So again, now he can drop down. You can go. Up he's got time now. Notice place. he could. He can move around. He can. He, ah, that didn't quite feel good. Jan Todd allows them to time. come down to 290. You know. So that's what he's going to do. A little heavy, but he can still score more right, points. This go. is about lifting the heaviest possible dumbbell or lifting the, a dumbbell for All the right, most reps. To see him do this? 290 pounds. Has it up. Machas in position. 20 seconds left. Oh, so close. Oh, so you can He'll see bow out 280 him. pounds. Oh Extremely impressive. One rep, 280 pounds, and with an injury. 
Yes, I, I think he was good for a 300 without the injury easily because he, he really he had a lot of drive, and that's with a with a bad hip. So uh, personally, I wish I could be that strong with a bad hip. Oh, Machaz is likely to finish in last in this competition. Things would have to go really oddly for him not to. But again, dealing with the injury. Next up is Bobby Thompson in his first career appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic in the professional ranks. He was the amateur world champion a year ago. He's going to start off with the 274. On the main stage. 274. 274. Got it. Wow. Good lift. He didn't rebend his knees. He just shoved that thing up over his head. That was very strong. He looks like he's going to challenge a 300, I'm sure. Bobby, 27 years old. He's six foot one, 365 pounds. He's going to attempt two nine, 290 pounds. With every rep with these massive dumbbells. These are beautiful implements, by the way. I just love this event. Oh, so close. Didn't get the down. He's he wants it again. He can get that. Time. Maybe a little rebend. In other words, once he gets the time. almost a lockout, if he bends his knees just a hair and get that distance back, rebend is 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 uh, allowed. Seconds to go. Not like a Viking press where you have to you can't rebend. You can see it. You need that energy. Bobby Thompson, Bobby Thompson up to the shoulder. Tilting it with that left hand. Tilting it out, getting his arm oh, getting his arm uh, parallel to the to the ground so he wants to get another one out Should I go for 280? 12 seconds he's got 10 seconds he's got to hurry 280 pounds got this would match Machas bell shock can he beat the buzzer no no A good effort, Bobby 274 Johnson, pounds one time is the mark for Bobby Thompson and a very strong first foray into the Arnold Strongman Classic at the professional ranks. He gets the dumbbell in good position and just shoves it overhead to a lockout. Great hip drive. So you guys understand this competition now. So two competitors down, eight to go. Alexei Novikov is next, 24 years old from Kiev, Ukraine. Just to keep this in perspective, the the world's record, well, aside from the great Lewis Sear himself and some others back when one-handed dumbbell pressing was uh, was practiced around the world, uh, you know, 10 years ago, lifting a 220-pound dumbbell was a big deal. And now here we are, almost 100 pounds over. So take us through what we're looking, the hips, the balance. Here we go. Alexi, one of... Many Alexei examples we have here of Novikov. both brains and bronze. Holds a master's degree in international economics. Works as a business and financial advisor when he's not training and competing. Good lift at 274. Very nice, Very nice lift. So he's only two points behind Misha and Rob at this point. So, you know, he wants to he wants to take he could actually skip up several places with a with a good with a with a good performance here. He's three points out of fifth place, so he yes. could very easily make his way into the top half of this competition. He finished seventh last year. Jump into 300 pounds. He'd be our first man to lift 300, and he sticks it. Awesome. Put a little rebend into it. Super explosive. A, a young athlete, but he shows so much maturity in the fact that he was he was really patient with that, and then he stuck with it. And he's got 45 seconds. If you were Alexi, would you attempt to raise the bar and go to 310, or would you try to put another rep on at 300? I'd go up and wait because that's that's the knockout punch. That's how you make. That's probably how you make the most points. He's going to go to 310 pounds. These are strong men. They want they want to lift the heaviest thing possible. Here he goes. Great position. Explosive. He can rebend under it if he just pushes out a little bit. Ten seconds left. I don't think there's enough time. No, that just took He's a lot of gas. For it, but took a lot of gas. I don't think it's realistic for him to make this attempt. Still 300 pounds. Ten seconds. Oh, he has 10 seconds now. Here we go. 
Come on. Alexei Novikov, 310 pounds. Oh. Had it locked out, but just couldn't maintain the position under it. Great explosion on this hips, though, and, and uh, 300 pounds, that's going to be a big, big mark. Gets it in great position. Notice how his his upper arm is not only parallel, but actually pointed upwards. It's directly below his spine, great hip drive, and the center of gravity as close as possible to the middle of his body, and that's, that's the lockout, so... Excellent. I expect Rob Kearney to do pretty well in this event because he's a he's a good presser. He's good at static events. Rob Kearney, first appearance in the Arnold Strongman Classic. 28-year-old being supported by his husband, Joey. He's got his English Bulldog Glitter, one of the more colorful competitors with the hair, and he has been very entertaining here in his first appearance in the Arnold Strongman Classic. He gives everything he's got, and he showed us in trial by stone that that is absolutely, he's a committed man. I think he's going to get under some big dumbbells here. 274. Very nice. That was good. That was very good. I would say that he uh, he's going to have to really depend on that uh, on that rebend and catch it just at the right time overhead to be able to lock it out. He's going to try for 290. If he gets this, he'll have the second heaviest lift so far. He is certainly in range of finishing in the top five in this competition. Oh, 90 unsuccessful, big. asking for another weight back. He's going to go to 274 again. So if he does this, he would move ahead of Bobby Thompson, at least, for having multiple reps at 274. Yeah. This is part of the strategic uh, uh, component of this event. A little surprised by this. I thought he was going to, you know, get a little closer to a 280, 290 dumbbell, but it's been a long weekend. He's got 20 seconds left, thereabouts. Looks like he'll try for 274 one more time. He's in good position. Let's see what his hip drive does for him. Oh, he just doesn't keep it under he doesn't get under the dumbbell quite well enough his positioning could have been a little bit better by tilting the uh, dumbbell a little more of an angle so once again, rob kearney very strong performance throughout but the last two events uh, it seems fatigue might have set in for rob yes here's his good attempt good explosion he locked it out timed it just right misha's quite good at this event so he wants to separate himself. Mikhail Shivlikov. And he's right behind 41 year old. And he has been dealing with an ankle injury all throughout the competition. Some events it seems to hinder him. Some events it only seems to hinder him when he's walking away from the platform. <laughs> he gives his best effort each and every time. How will it affect here on the Sear Dumbbell Strategic Challenge? Well, you can tell that they have to uh, they have to not only get it overhead, then they have to position themselves under the dumbbell. So that positioning requires some foot movement sometimes and at least the stability of your ankle. So I expect. This could this could factor in, but he surprised us all weekend with how well he's handled everything. Start Great position. 274 pounds. Got it. Did get that lift up. Wow. It's kind of teetering there at the end, but waited until he saw the down signal. Yes. It kind of went. It also went behind him, but now he's trying to decide what he wants to do. I think he had a plan, like you know, maybe I'll get the 274. But he actually did it. So at 290, that would that would give him some very valuable points. Came in tied for six with Rob Kearney. So anything else he lifts, including another lift at 274, would mean he is taking that spot. So it's 290. So this would. This would put him an, uh, ahead of Rob. And like you said, have him right up uh, next to Alexi, who has a 300 pound dumbbell. And a two point lead over Alexi Novikov. So every dumbbell that's on the stage is heavier than what Lewis, uh, Lewis Sear lifted. So this is, this is above and beyond the man this was named for. Misha dropping the dumbbell. He's asking for one more. 
A little bit of indecision on which one he wanted to attempt. He'll go back to 274. He's going to have to hurry a bit. If he gets this, he'll be for sure ahead of Rob Kearney. And oh. Time expires before he can make the attempt. Still an outstanding, inspirational performance throughout this weekend by Mikhail Shivlikov. He got really terrific position with the with this dumbbell almost straight up and down so it keeps that center of gravity near his spine in the middle of his body great hip drive got the got the down signal that was excellent he really knew he had he couldn't move his feet so he had to stick that so and i think he really had in his head i'm going to go out and get one and then he said oh wow it was my first attempt what do i do next i'm not sure how much he thought through it next up is jerry pritchett who had a phenomenal performance in the timber carry Posting a 10 second time. He's going to start at 274 as well. It's been a common weight for a lot of these guys to begin with, and he drops it pretty quickly. Now, we, we've seen several athletes go at 274 and then jump up immediately and maybe reconsider, try and come back down. Seeing what's going on, should someone maybe do two reps at 274 and then try and move up? I think that's a great strategy. Something's going on here. I don't know what's happening. And Jerry wow. Pritchett's unable to complete a lift, so started in fifth place and he'll obviously be dropping down likely giving up points to or at least enough points to pass to Novikov, Shivlikov and Kearney as well. Now we're into our final four and this is where things get really interesting. You've got a fight to get on the podium and you've got a fight for first place. First would be the fight for the podium. J.F. Caron 31 and a half points over the course of the competition. Martins Litsis, 32 points over the course of the competition. I think Litsis had his eyes set towards a bigger prize, but staying on the podium for a second straight year would still be quite the accomplishment. That really would. It shows that he solidified himself on top of the strongman world. Always on the podium, that means you're always within striking distance of actually winning. He has the benefit of watching what J.F. Caron can do, the 37-year-old who is from the home territory of the legendary Louis Sear, cradle of strongman. Well put, that's exactly right. Louis Sears from Montmagny had a great strongman competition series uh, in his honor years ago. Jean Francois from Quebec City. Ready? Yes. He'll start at 274. So three other men lift this as their best performed weight. And he is no ret there. He was close. He needs to he needs to position that dumbbell a little more solidly towards the neck, and he needs and that hip ex, the hip explosion was good, but he just his timing was off. He just didn't finish the lockout, so maybe a little bit of a rebend with his knees to get under it and lock it out. I mean, this is again this is a greater weight than Lewis here himself had lifted, but that was 125 years ago when Lewis here was doing this. So, like we said at the open. Something generations ago no one would imagine. And the inspiration for what generations from now will do. J.F. Caron, 274. Oh, I would put that a little closer to the, I would pull that a little closer to the middle of the spine. So he's got 30 seconds left, but he's been no rep twice. And now his hopes of making the podium are starting to fall off. That, this would take a lot of pressure off of Martins because he would just come out and do the 274. So what he needs to do here, he needs to get a, get it in a better position. He's got the drive and the strength. He just needs to get a better position. Oh, so close so many times. Unbelievable. Great effort. But unfortunately, no lift recorded for J.F. Caron. That means he is almost assuredly going to be in a tie for ninth. He'll only get a point and a half, and that means Martins Litsis is going to finish ahead of him and make the podium. Yes, that's that's assured at this point. If he gets a lift, uh, he, he he really wants to he really wants to have a strong performance. I'm sure he's aiming close to 300 or above. Martins Litsis, born in Riga, Latvia, now living in Los Angeles. 
Mathematically, he could climb into second. It is possible. But he would need Mateusz Kieliszkowski to not record a lift. And Martins would have to win this event. Yes, that would be, in my mind, a little improbable. Good position. He's been training hard on this. Good lockout. Excellent lift. Well, with his left hand there. Okay, now he wants, to, he wants to go up. 280. And that would that would exceed pretty much all the athletes except for Alexi. And Belshock. Machez Belshock recorded yes, Belshock. a 280 lift. Yes. He'll jump to 290. 290 in there second. We go. He had a little bit of a second guess on that. But again, the strategy. Uh, 280. No, 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 290. Okay. He needs to get a better position than that. There he goes. He's got it. Now a big hip, hip explosion and time it. Unable to get it. And he's going to bow out gracefully. Gracefully. At 274 pounds. So we've got a four way tie for third place right now. Alexei Novikov, best lift at 300. Machaz Belshak at 280. And Martins Litsis. Big hit of the competition at 274. Great lockout. I expected him to go a little bit higher. That was a really strong lift initially. So, but that just shows how much how much energy you expend to get that one big lift. So Mateusz Kieliszkowski is next. He is he is reportedly going to open at 300 pounds. So this event is very much in his wheelhouse. He's going to start with a weight that would make him the new leader. Yes, he's the record holder in this event, so that shows his prowess. And just like I said, he is actually trying to throw a knockout punch. He wants to start around 300. He's going to move into the, put another 10 or 15 pounds and then go after the big one. He wants to, he wants to not only finish in first, he wants to finish strong and show that he really belongs on the top. Such an explosive athlete. He's got such tremendous athletic ability. And if you've seen him do these events, uh, do the dumbbells in the past, he, uh, he puts himself in absolute perfect position. They're get, getting mentally prepared. He's going through the sequence in his head. Kuskowski attempting 300 pounds. Not quite, not quite. Something's going on there. He kind of faltered a little bit. Now doing the math, Bill, if he is able to take the lead here, either by doing 300 pounds multiple times, going to 310, whatever it takes, if he's able to take the lead, half Thor Bjornsson would have to lift 280 to win the competition. He couldn't tie at 274. There'd be too many people log jammed with him. Yes. It would bring his points down too far. So this is very much available here if Mateus could get it up. And he does. There you go. A lot more leg drive on that. His position was good on the first one, but he just put a lot more diesel behind that. So here he goes. He's going right to the 320. So just like I said, he's going for the knockout punch. This is the record. He's going for the knockout punch. He wants he wants Hathor to have to Get lift $5, this thousand dollars as well. Yes. Look at that beautiful implement, stainless steel. Right at the end, he's just got a little, just enough time. He's got to get it right up, position it, and get under it. For the record, for the cash, for yes. pressure, for the yeah. win, he's got it. Wow, that is astonishing. That is great. 320 pounds. They didn't bring a bigger barbell than that one. That is astonishing. <laughs> the Sear Dumbbell Strategic Challenge. He throws strategy out the window and says, lift this. Watch, watch his position. Perfect position. Very explosive. Gets right under it. Perfect timing. Locks it out. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What an athlete. So he moves into first place. And that does mean half Thor Bjornsson has to lift 280 in order to take the title of champion. 
not just once, not twice, but three-time consecutive champion here at the Arnold Strongman Classic. But if he can't lift 280, he's going to be in some serious trouble. That's true. So we'll see what happens here. It's all on him to, to win. One lift. He's at. He's on the 280 right now. He's just going to take. This is his knockout punch. He's got a minute and a half. He's left-handed, by the way. 280 pounds. This is for the title. Up. And for the third time, Hathor Bjornston is the Arnold Strongman Classic Champion. He wants to go up. He wants to give everybody a little, little bit more of a show here. Now, previously, when he's had the opportunity to stretch his limits, he said, nope, I'm going to save myself for later. There's no reason to save yourself now, big guy. No, no, continue. Just he, he wants to do this for pride. He wants to. I, I, it would surprise me if he nails this, if he goes to the 320. The 300, wow. making it look strong. easy. That looks stronger. He's like, give me the big one. Bring it out here. Here it is. How much time does he have left? 40 seconds. He's already got the championship. Wow. And he's going to 330. Apparently, they did bring a bigger dumbbell. Yeah. OK, come on. I think he can get this, really, because he made those first two look so, so easy. Look at that beautiful implement. 330 pounds. Great position. The mountain. Oh, so close. Come on, Half Thor. Oh. He'll say no. No. He'll have to settle for being a three time Arnold Strongman Classic Champion. Half Thor Bjornsson, the mountain, conquers once again. That is, that's great. That's astounding. That puts him in, in rarefied air, so only one other person has ever been a three time uh, consecutive, three, three time consecutive uh, winner. And that would be actually Sadrunas Viscus himself, the great Z. Being congratulated there by his wife, Kelsey. We'll crunch the numbers for you, and we'll be getting everything ready for our crowning of a champion. Right now, let's throw it over to Kiki Dixon, standing by with Half Thor Bjornsson. Half Thor, you just became three-time champion here this evening. The sport has progressed so much over the last three years. What does it mean to you to know that you are the one setting the bar so high? It means a lot to me to be here, you know, winning this three times. I'm the second man to do so. Only Citroën Savikas has done it before. I know Brian Shaw has won it three times, but never, he didn't do it three years in a row. So that means a lot to me, you know, because this is the hardest show in the world to win. The heaviest, the, the toughest, the hardest to you know qualify to. So to stand here on the stage today, winning it the third year in a row means a lot. It's an incredible feat indeed. You've been doing strongmen for a decade. You had a stint on Game of Thrones. What does the next decade look like for you in terms of goals and achievements you want to get after? So I have a clear goal in my mind right now. I wanna, I wanna deadlift. 501 kilogram. That's a big goal of mine. I want to reach. I'm going to do that this this year. Uh, another goal is to keep getting stronger and better, right? Not just in in the in the sport of strongman, but just as a person in general. Congratulations on your three-time championship here tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kiki. Thanks to our champ, Hathor Bjornsson. Much more to come here at the 2020 Arnold Strongman Classic. Yeah! The Iron Game from the 2020 Arnold Strongman Classic is brought to you by Go Ruck. Founded by a Green Beret, Go Ruck is an American brand with special forces roots. Theragun, change the way you move. Yeti. Built for the wild. Rogue, don't weaken. And the Arnold Sports Festival.